Well, we're trying to get some of the same answers, Evan, and that's why tomorrow uh, we have an opposition day, and it will be on Ebola because it's the public health crisis that we face. And what we're asking is for the Minister of Health, the Minister of Public Safety, and the Chief Public Health Officer to come in front of Health Committee every two weeks in order to answer parliamentarians on behalf of Canadians. It's the job of the government to ensure the health and safety of Canadians. It's the job of the government to communicate openly and transparently. And so we want them to come forward to Health Committee and answer our questions so that we are assured that the health of Canadians is being protected. Okay, let me get at another story. The Global Mail reported today that Public Health Agency has auctioned off protective materials like face masks, gloves for a small percentage of their actual value. In one case, 14,000 masks, which would retail for about $30,000, went for $1 a buck. So when the government says it's contributed $2.5 million in protective materials, Ms. Adams, are you actually inflating the value of those materials for political optics? There's already been controversy about the lack of delivery. Uh, what about this one? Are you inflating the value? Canada has actually been at the forefront in providing a response to the Ebola outbreak in Western Africa. So we've donated millions and millions of pieces of personal protective equipment. So 1.2 million gowns, 1.5 million gloves, and 2 million face shields. So Canada has been particularly generous. Millions and millions of pieces of personal protective equipment. Just to be fair, none of those have arrived yet, right? Just to be fair, none of those have arrived in West Africa? No, that's not true. And in fact, we've used the Royal Canadian Air Force as Hercules and we've delivered about 150,000 of those face shields. The remaining uh, personal protective equipment is being shipped in the coming days and weeks based on the World Health Organization's priorities. Right. Fair enough. What about the auction price? Can you tell us why the government auctioned this off and, and why the big discount? Uh, so those auctions are, are done in a very transparent manner, and that's how those figures are made available. All previous auctions are available online also. Uh, as soon as the need in September uh, became more obvious, and as Ebola obviously was spreading across West Africa, the auction was halted. And as I've mentioned, millions and millions of pieces of personal protective equipment have been donated by Canada to the... Sorry. I think I lost you, but, but I'm just trying to get at So when the government says you've contributed $2.5 million in protective materials, I understand that. What's that price based on, the price that you could have got for it, or the auction price? Evan, you know, it's, it's not just the millions and millions of pieces of personal protective equipment. It's also uh, hard dollars that we donate, and the $65 million being donated to the World Health Organization, to Médecins Sans Frontières, to Red Cross, to the United Nations. It's two mobile lab units where the scientists uh, rotate out on shifts. You, you, you can't even put a price on that level of compassionate care when you're sending field experts out into a very dangerous field in West Africa, and they're rotating through on those shifts. So okay. Canada's been very generous. Okay, so uh, Libby Davies, well, Christy Duncan, what's your response to Well, that? I, I have to say, Evan, that I do think that Canada is uh, leading the world, at least in terms of public relations. But to get beyond that, to get into actual um, hard numbers, implementation, whether or not the vaccine, whether or not protective gear is actually getting to people, is an entirely different matter. The fact is that Canada has only spent less than 10% of the $65 million um, that's been committed. Um, we know that back in June, the representative in Sierra Leone for the Canadian government was putting in urgent calls for protective gear. That was in June. We're now in uh, uh, you know, late October. Um, and this question now of inflated prices and selling off discounted uh, 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 materials, I mean, it, it just is so absurd. If it, if, if it, you know, it would be funny if it weren't so deadly serious in terms of what we're facing. So I do feel that there's been a great lack of clarity around the vaccine, around the um, well, to be fair, measures we spoke that have to been... The, we spoke yep. to the WHO uh, mm -hmm. every day, and they said it is difficult to get things to West Africa. It's not exactly easy to ship things in. Yeah, but... but um, but Evan, we're talking about June. 
when this coal was first put into Canada. Um, even as far back as 2003, um, there were calls for a vaccine to be made, and, and obviously that, it, that has been developed. But look how long it's now taken, and I believe that the shipment went out today. Um, so that's good. But we've been pressing this week after week after week. So I, I guess what I'm saying is we've got to get beyond the PR here, and we've got to get into the hard numbers and making sure that Canada is delivering, delivering on what it's committing to. Okay, I want to get...